Welcome to the March 8, 2017 Sky Rose Zoning Board of Appeals. Do we have a roll call, please? Ms. Shoup? Here. Mr. Blaze? Here. Mr. Hebert? Here. Mr. Maroon? Here. Mr. Stark? Mr. Crockett? Here. And Mr. Richard? Ms. Shoup, you will uh, be voting tonight on official capacity. Um, uh, do I have a motion on the minutes from February 8, 2017? Motion to approve as presented. We have a second lay down here. Who's seconding? Second. Thought she the Pledge of Allegiance. Yep. Getting there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll stand up now. Uh, Wait, we need to take a vote. Yeah. Oh, no, we have all in favor of it. You guys got to keep me confused. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I never thought you were having a heart attack or something. <laughs> <laughs> just just trying to sing you. <laughs> okay, so let's jump right into the appeal. It's appeal number 2598. This is an appeal that has come back to us. It's a practical difficulty request by Ken, uh, Kenneth and Heidi Foreman Smith on 6 9th Street, Assistance Map U23, Parcel 63. Uh, could you give us an overview of what uh, took place and why we're here? Sure. Um, this is a practical difficulty request um, uh, by the, the uh, uh, Kenneth and Heidi, and uh, it was basically to replace, remove and replace a shed on their property. Um, in the previous board uh, meeting, the board wasn't satisfied that all locational options had been explored, fully explored, and mainly the uh, concern was, as I as I understood it, that the um, they wanted to make sure that the building was so fully onto the the uh, the property that rainwater and whatnot wouldn't be shedded onto adjoining abutting properties, and so they they really wanted the uh, the applicants to come back with some better explanation for why there was no other location or if there was another location where the shed could be placed. And so that's why it was tabled and it's back before you tonight to hopefully address those questions. We've also got the minutes uh, in the packet. So if anybody hasn't had a chance to read that. Okay, do I have a representative? Yes. Do me a favor, just state your name, address, and we'll go from there. Okay, my name is Ken Smith, um, and this is my wife, Heidi Foreman Smith, and we own the property on 6 9th Street in Scarborough. To see back in. Thank you. So, if you'd like to give us an overview of what you've uh, been trying to accomplish, and then we'll look at some of the paperwork that you've provided, and we'll go from there. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, and thanks for the opportunity um, to come back. Uh, so, Heidi and I had a chance to to speak with um, Brian um, about uh, the the application, and um, we talked about some potential options and and really I think what what we were lacking I guess in terms of our last um, presentation to the board um, and and what we really wanted to try to do with this new um, new plan is to try to improve on the setbacks um, what we found out was when we had the survey done that our overhang on the roof on the left-hand side of the shed was technically trespassing on our neighbor's property because there was only, um, I think, uh, a few inches on the left-hand <coughs> side. When, so when did you do that survey? <coughs> when? Yes. Yeah. Um, we had turned it on the bottom. Was it that the original? Can you hear me okay? Is this working? Um, yeah, so October-ish. Okay, so it was prior to the last meeting. Yeah. 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 Just want to get that on record. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, just to review, um, the shed really needs, we feel, to be replaced. Uh, repairing it in place is a very challenging um, proposition because the right, the left side is set, settling left to the right, and in order to put a foundation under it, it would require lifting the shed um, or lifting it in place, which would uh, require us 
to encroach on our neighbor's property in order to do so because the shed is at the abutters um, um, property line. So we had discussed that last time that it was a, a very challenging uh, approach to try to repair in place and that's the reason that we sought to um, do a, an, an appeal and um, try to replace it instead and which would result in a much better um, product. And so We, we included two options of the new shed, and if you'll recall, the new shed that we original saw, originally sought was three feet shorter than the previous shed, or the existing shed, I should say. And um, we looked at pushing the structure about a foot to the left, which we feel will, or to the right, I'm sorry, which we feel will improve on the, um, on the setbacks, um, this would result in the rear side of a 12-inch setback uh, on the new overhang of the roof and actually a 16-inch setback on, on the wall, if you will, from the property line. And on the front of the left side, where it's a little closer, it results in a 13.2-inch um, um, uh, setback from the property line to the wall but when you take into account a four inch overhang, that still gives us a 9.2 inch setback from the overhang. Um, and we'd also considered some of the concerns expressed by the board about water running off the shed into the neighbor's property. This would you know, drip into our property, but uh, we even made the consideration or offer to um, lay um, a strip of uh, crushed gravel and riprap to kind of minimize if you will, splattering onto the neighbor's property, um, which you know currently is is over and into the neighbor's property. So this is an improvement of a foot on the left-hand setback. It removes any trespassing issues um, that that came about from the last meeting. We'd also looked at potentially uh, pushing the the shed a foot from the rear setback where we currently have a minimum setback on the rear of six inches um, and slightly larger on, on the right hand side of the back side of the shed. Um, but by doing so, after we had made all of the measurements in terms of the challenges we face is that the shed and the side of the shed are close to the stairs uh, of the exit and then also the corner of the house. And if we push this any more than six inches, it becomes problematic in terms of uh, the space between uh, the, the stairs and, and the new resulting structure. So um, by pushing it six inches forward, we ran into that problem, but what we proposed is actually reducing this right-hand overhang by six inches, which gives us more space in there um, as well to kind of accommodate that issue here. We really don't have a lot of options in this very, very small backyard and lot. And, and we explored a lot of different ones and went back to the property and measured out a lot of different possibilities and, and trying to find a solution that would give us the storage that we want um, and, and really not encroach on the neighbor's property or, or create problems in terms of passage through here. So the proposal is, based upon all the information we provided, the proposal is to slide the shed, the, the, um, the shed a foot to the right, six inches forward, and then from the plan we had, <coughs> reduce the overhang by six inches to allow us sufficient room um, to walk between the uh, stairs and the right hand overhang. Is that plan one? Yes. Okay. Plan one we feel is the best solution um, and, and I, I think it improves on the setbacks. It reduces concerns about you know water dripping on the neighbor's lands or, or, or a property or anything like that. You do have two other plans though, correct? I'm sorry? You do have two other alternative plans? We do. Okay. Are you presenting those tonight as well? 
Uh, we were told to present the, the plan that we preferred, um, but I'm happy to if you'd like. I just noticed in the staff comments there was three different ones, so I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, yeah. So number one is the one that that we prefer, and based upon all the the factors that I mentioned earlier. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, board member questions. I, I think he's done exactly what we asked him to do. We asked him to place the place the shed so that it's totally on the property and no no water is flowing onto anybody else's property and he's got enough room to move it around if that's the one that he likes as far as I'm concerned that's I'm okay with that just want to step in and uh, no just to clarify um, when I talked to the uh, the applicants um, I suggested that they, they explore several different options and sort of show the board that they have explored options and why those other options didn't work and that's why there's three plans in there. They, they wanted to demonstrate that they had looked at a couple of different, three different configurations and then selected the one that they felt gave them the best chance of, of locating the shed on the property in a way that uh, you know, would work for them. So that's why there's the three. It's not necessarily. It, it, originally, they were going to kind of let you guys choose. <laughs> and, and, and I explained <laughs> that that can't, that can't, <laughs> we can't work that way. So they, they selected the one that they felt was, was the best of the three. Um, I just got a couple of questions. <coughs> I agree with you as I think that they've done exactly what we requested them doing. And to be candid with you, just the distances that I'm seeing from a uh, 88 point of view, you know, 30 inches and 27 inches. That, that, that's tight. Whereas 37 and 40 are reasonable. I do have two questions. Do you have any intention of connecting the two and making that into a, a another li living area? No, no. Okay, this so you're is not going to be doing any of that. Not putting a roof over or anything. Like no, that. no, no, no. Okay. Definitely uh, not. Other board members have questions. Those are my only two uh, that, that satisfied my concern. The motion. Oh, we should go through. Sorry. Sometimes when it is clean, it's a little easy to do. Well, jump. we went through that last last time. Do we have to go through them again? Uh, I think we should. I think we should just quickly. I'm not going to go through a lot of it, but we'll just go rush through it rapidly. And because you're right, we did go through, but we did have some people object on specific items. I want them the opportunity to either they may still object. Um, so we'll, we'll start off with, um, and you just want to read right what you put in there in the record. I think it's the same thing. The need for the variance is due to the unique circumstance of the property and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. If you just want to state that. Sir. Sure. Um, the building position predates the setback requirements for the town. The lot is too small to conform to 15-foot setbacks. We will increase setbacks from current and build new structure with no overhang on neighbor's property. Okay. Uh, discussion on number one. I find that they've done the best job they can do in the circumstances, yep. so I'm very comfortable with it. Uh, all in favor of number one being that? That's unanimous. Okay. Number two, the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect <coughs> on either the use of the fair market value of abutting properties. Replacing a settling, rotting building with the new similar structure can only enhance the area. Moving the overhang off of a neighboring property will eliminate future title issues. Anybody with any questions on comments on that? I'll come back with just a, a, a formal statement. If you want to add to it, feel free. Uh, I think it accomplishes two things. That it does get it on the property that it belongs on and eliminates a potential problem down the road and uh, also any problems with future neighbors or whatever. And uh, it's going to help the market values because it's going to be new. It's going to look good. And I like the idea of the, the, the rocks and it's a great idea. So all in favor of two being that. That's unanimous. Number three. <coughs> Practical, did you want to jump in? Uh, no, I was just going to mention that they've also reduced the footprint of the existing structure with the one that they proposed. And that Could you put that on the record too, please? Thank you. 
The practical difficulty is not the result of an action taken by the applicant or the prior owner. This building and many in the Pine Point area were built before current setback requirements. And uh, I think that's pretty straightforward. Uh, any discussion on number three? Seeing none, all in favor of number three? That's your hands. Number four. No other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except a variance. There is no other feasible alternative as the lot size is so small. Repairing and replacing in place would require work crews and equipment on a butter's property for, un for unacceptable periods of time. Um, attached structural engineer report supports requested variance as the best option due to previously mentioned challenges. Because current building overhang overhangs the neighboring property line, the building will need to be moved. Okay. Any discussion on that? Normally I wouldn't agree, but I think we've addressed that in a few different issues. Yeah, the, uh, the, my, my opinion on that is number, number one, the proposals, you have the, the shed is there, so you have the right to the shed. You're putting it in line, you've reduced the size, you've moved it over as far as reasonable, you've showed us two other plans that, in my opinion, from an ADA point of view, aren't acceptable, even from a safety point of view, for that matter, if somebody had to get in there with a, a gurney or whatever, too narrow in some cases. Yeah. So I feel that you've done the best you can. The variance is the only, uh, the, uh, the variance is the only way you can accomplish this based on the regulations from the state. So I have no problem with voting yes on this. All in favor? That's unanimous. Number five, the variance, variance will bring will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with surrounding properties. Uh, yes, it'll be aesthetically more attractive and in conformance with current building codes. It will be totally situated on our own property. Okay. Any discussions on that? Comments on that? Okay, I'll just give them the record. Um, the fact is that it brings it into conformance with the current standards, which is not on somebody else's property. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess that's about as, as conforming down as you can get. If you get it off somebody else's property, it's going to make it new. And uh, so I, I believe that it does bring it in more, uh, more nearly into conformance, even if it is six inches, but it's still better. Okay, all in favor? That's unanimous, thank you. Number six, the granny of variance will not have an unusually adverse effect on the natural environment. No, this will not adversely affect the natural environment. In fact, we want to make the building smaller than the current one. We will also disconnect and remove the oil heating lines that currently run from the main house to the bunkhouse slash shed for the uh, furnace that is in the shed. Any discussion on this? Oh, I want to, it might not even be part of this. Did you say that you're willing to put like some crushed rock down or something like that to for water? Did you, did you make on the problem? side? Yeah. Yes, okay. absolutely. Yeah, if you could do that, that would be great. Because yep. then we're, we're really getting it away from doing anything to any neighbor's property or anything. Yes. Okay. Any other comments on that? Uh, I think that getting the, any time we can get oil lines. Uh, I had an oil spill in my house. I had no idea the damage that oil does until you've had an oil spill at your house. And it doesn't take very much. So getting it off the, the um, getting it out from under where it could break whatever is, is always a good thing in my opinion so that's good uh, and I, I do like the fact that you're doing the, the, the ground rock so I'm, I'm in favor of this uh, all in favor of number six that is unanimous number seven the property is not located in the whole or in part in the shoreland zone I think that's the case because you wouldn't be here otherwise so that's okay um, anything else we need to do on this so we uh, we voted on each other's separate items. We have a motion for approval. Move to approve appeal number 2598. Second. Any discussion on the, approval, the motion? Just one. I, I know you went through a lot last time you came here and it was frustrating. Uh, you did a great job. And you, I know that a lot of the things we do happen because of other reasons that you may not be aware of. And the, our goal is to be as consistent and as fair with everybody as we possibly can. I think you did that with grace, and I thank you for doing that. Thank you. So with that statement, all in favor? Unanimous. Thank, thank you very, very much. much. Have a great day. <coughs> um, just
to remind the applicants, don't forget to record your variance within 90 days. So, so like the first thing you should do this week or next <laughs> is go down and record that variance at the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds. Uh, yeah, as soon as you get the, the actual decision. Yeah. <laughs> Can't do it when you don't have it, right? Mark. Thank you. Helicopter things to take you? Yeah. <laughs> <Did> you? <laughs> no, <laughs> you didn't realize, did you? No. <laughs> now you're just showing off, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yourself uh, and the relationship with the project and we'll go from there Jim. Okay. Thank you Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Jim Fisher with Northeast Civil Solutions. We're here this evening to uh, represent Joshua Bernstein and his family uh, requesting a practical difficulty variance to be able to reconstruct a deck that is uh, was on a house, uh, the house that was built about 130 years ago. Um, what I'd like to, uh, to do is just take you through a couple of the brief things. Uh, Mr. Bernstein is actually at home this evening with uh, taking care of his children while his wife is working, so he was not able to join us. But uh, uh, toward this end, what we have is a house that is, again, about 130 years old. It was in the Bernstein family belonging to uh, Mr. and Mrs. Bernstein's grandparents uh, from back in the 50s. They ended up uh, giving it or selling it to uh, Mr. Bernstein and his wife uh, about seven years ago. Uh, in conjunction with that, uh, in, in acquiring the house, the grandparents are pri prior to that point, uh, there was a deck on the back of the house. And I'd like to call your attention to a photograph that's toward the back of your packet. It shows the rear of the house with the deck plate and actually with the sauna tubes that um, are, are covered and have been for the past uh, quite a number of years with buckets to be able to preserve their integrity uh, that supported the deck that had been on the house. When uh, Mr. Bernstein's grandparents owned the house, they didn't really, as they were getting out more and more old, elderly, they didn't really need the deck. And subsequently, they didn't put any money into it, and it got to the point where it degraded. And then from a safety issue, uh, they ended up having it taken down. But as you can see, again, the deck plate is still there, and the supports are still there. When Joshua and his family did take it over uh, about seven years ago, they weren't able to rebuild it at the time or come at the time, but they are now uh, financially uh, well off enough to be able to want to put the deck there, support their young family, just to be able to go out and use it as we would all use our decks. Um, in this case, however, because the house was or is as old as it was, uh, the, and you'll see by the plan that's at the very back of your parcel or the, of your packet, that the house uh, is closer to Scottow Hill Road than it is to uh, Two Rod Road. The address and the orientation of the house are at Two Rod Road. Uh, it just happens to have two fronts in this case, so the setbacks are also two fronts. Uh, the overall parcel is about three and a half acres, and you can see where the house sits up in this kind of front left corner of Two Rod Road that way. The point being is that, uh, again, the house is over 130 years old, and zoning came by considerably after the fact. They would simply like to be able to just rebuild the deck on the support uh, columns that are there, uh, attach it to the deck plate that has been there for quite a long time. They can't really move the deck if they were to use it, want to use it, obviously, uh, over to within the building envelope because <coughs> the kitchen is in that area. And you can see where the propane tank is located that goes into, or the natural gas tank that goes into the kitchen area. So the entire house would, or the entire lower section of the house would have to be actually re completely remodeled just to be able to put a door onto a deck that would actually then extend over toward the garage. It just isn't quite practical that way. 
uh, along with the triple doors that you see there, two of them uh, op would open up onto the deck. They simply want to be able to take advantage of a deck that was once constructed with the house and they'd like to be able to just use that again. Uh, there really isn't any other, and we'll cover this in just a moment, but there really is another feasible alternative for them to be able to put a deck anywhere else on the house. Uh, so again, it's just kind of zoning is caught up with the actual structure and toward this end, we just like a, uh, a small variance to be able to rebuild it in place. Toward that end, I'd be happy to address any questions or comments that you have. Thank you. Do you want to step in? Um, it's pretty, pretty much cut and dry. Uh, the, the only comment I would make is it must have been a long time ago that that deck was on the house because I went back to, I think it was 2003, with the uh, Google Earth histor historical uh, photos, and I couldn't find it on the house anyway. It was almost 25 years ago. When that came down. I called Rodney Watson. <laughs> the town. 25 Historia. years ago that it was taken off? About oh. that. The grandparents are deceased. Joshua doesn't know exactly when it was. He was pretty small at the time, and he just he remembers it being out there, but he doesn't know exactly when it came off. Was it taken off, or did it fall off? Uh, it was kind of a combination of both. It got to the point where the grandparents were elderly to the point where they just didn't use it anymore, and they it kind of fell into disrepair. And it, when it started to really fall apart, then uh, they had it taken down rather than replacing it. And then they continued to live in the house for a while, and then back in, in 2010 is when they ended up transferring title to their grandson. What was the size of the original deck? Uh, 16, I think it was 16 by 20. About the or same? Is it, what is it, 16 by 20? Or I, I believe it's about 16 by 20. Shows. And are those, are those the original fittings there? Uh, I don't know that they're pretty old. When you lift the buckets off and you take a look at them, um, they may need a little bit of work to be I mean, able they, to. They weren't something that was done in the last two or three years, five years. Oh no, th these were those were the supports that were on the deck. Um, I don't know if they were the original supports. I don't know when the deck was actually built. I don't think it was a deck there in the 1800s when the house was built, <laughs> but it, at some point it was put on afterwards. And uh, we did caution them that they may want to take a look at the integrity of the support systems. Mm, push it over. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I guess for uh, just for the sake of, of uh, just making it crystal clear, um, the proposed deck is not going to be larger than the previous deck like from the house. Um, I don't actually know the answer to that. I mean, the 16 by 20 is what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. and you can uh, well, you can see by the, the photos that uh, what they're planning to put there now would just encompass the support systems. Sure. So it's not likely that uh, it's going to be any larger. Right. It's unlikely. I mean, utilizing the existing supports. In the exactly. They just want to build it the way he believes it was, Great. And which is about the 16 by 20. Fine. I've, I've got to be honest. Uh, I It's a 4.5 acre lot. Scottle Hill Road back then probably was only one rod wide. And it, it literally, as you pointed out, time is just kind of caught up. I don't see how this interferes with anything. Um, so I have absolutely no problem with replacing that deck. I just don't. I don't think there's a negative that I can think of. I mean, <coughs> do the same thing with a patio, and not need to come to us. So what's the difference? So that's kind of my position on it. Uh, I do need to go through everything else, obviously, but I, I don't want to belabor it if everybody's sort of in the same place. If, I, if others aren't, it's fine. Well, I would just extend on Mr. Hebert's comment. Uh, it would be nice to know what the size of the other one was, and it was the 16 by 20, just to make sure it is going, that they're not trying to build something bigger. I don't know that anybody knows that. We okay. also took a look at the Google Earth photos, as, as uh, um, Brian has mentioned, and when you take a look at them as far back as we can go, the photos of this area, the deck's not there. Uh, Did anybody pull a, just pull a tape measure out from the foundation to, to the last row of um, footings um, where the pails are? I mean, did anybody just just out of curiosity? I'm sure Nobody he did. shot an elevation or a locational yeah. point. We actually on located the house with survey and we didn't actually shoot in yeah. the actual I mean, that would, have been, that would have answered the question. That would have been sort of a no-brainer. <laughs> if, if, if you take a look at that spatially, it looks it, like... It doesn't look bad. Yeah, I, it looks reasonable. It looks reasonable given the dimensions that, that are being proposed, but it, it would have been sort of proof in the pudding if that had been... Point taken. Done. Thank you. The that addition off the right side there looks like a little sunroom or something like that. Yes. Is that on the road side? Mm -hmm. It is. 
It actually extends. So that's, that's out there for a lot further than this deck is going to be. You can right. see that on the plan. You can see that on the plan. Yeah. All the more reason that. Any other questions from the board? Let me open up to the public. Would anyone from the public like to speak on this? See, now I'll close the public part of this meeting. We'll come back to the board for questions. <coughs> and looking to the, the requirements of practical difficulty. <coughs> okay, the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. It is uh, paraphrasing. The lot has two fronts. Uh, we're actually going off to the side of the house, so the unique character of the property is that the house was built very close to what was at that, well, as you mentioned, probably a smaller road without a right-of-way at the time. Right-of-way was created afterward. Unique circumstances that the house is tucked close to the corner of the property near two streets. And the granting of the variance uh, will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or the fair market value of abutting properties. Uh, that is correct, and, and that's one of the reasons we passed out the aerial photo that you've got to show you that the houses in that area are fairly spread apart, or well spread apart, so literally nobody's even going to see this. Um, and you can, it's, it's a small photo before you, but you can see that uh, some of those houses have things like fairly substantial decks and pools and what have you. So this actually brings this house, which has sort of had sort of a detrimental effect up until now, more into compliance with the properties that are in the neighborhood. And the uh, practical difficulty is not a result of an action taken by the applicant or prior owner. And that's why I asked whether or not those, any of those have been put in in the last six, four or five years. Uh, according to the client, they were there when he was small, and he's not so small anymore, and when, when his parents, his grandparents had it. So it's probably sometime back in the 70s. <coughs> uh, and uh, no other, wait, wait, I'm on the right line here. And no other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except the variance. Uh, that's correct, just given the orientation of the building. Again, what you see on the left side of the back of the house, that's the kitchen area uh, that is completely plumbed, and it's got the, the gas situation there. So if we were to try to put a deck elsewhere, uh, just for having a deck, it certainly wouldn't be able to go there. The point being is that any deck that might go up there fairly easily would end up going behind the garage, which would then not be accessible from the house. So this is really the only practical alternative to be able to rebuild that deck. Plus the doors, the access doors are already there. And the granting of the variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with surrounding properties. That's a little more tricky. Um, again, nobody's really going to see, well, you could see this, but it's not like there's a house directly across the street. Again, that's why we wanted to show you the aerial photograph. Um, and the houses that are in the area, they're nice houses, to be sure. And some of them are uh, equally the size of this one, which isn't huge, but it's not really small. Many of them are considerably larger with uh, pertinent structures such as pools and uh, considerable decks of their own right. So it, it would tend to uh, result more nearly in conformance with a lot of the other properties that are in that area. And um, the granting of the variance will not have an unreasonable ad adverse effect on the natural environment? Uh, it will not. It's a mowed lawn at this point, and uh, the deck support structures are already there. So they, didn't, they may have to enhance them a little bit, but they won't be expanding them. And that's on the hill, so you're not in the uh, flood zone there, right? That's correct. And the dimensional standards, uh, just uh, so we, if this is a classic case of a strict application of dimensional standards and ordinance to the property for which the variance is sought, would both preclude the, the use uh, of the property which is permitted in the zone which is located and also would result in significant economic injury to the applicant. Um, that's always a challenge a little bit. Obviously, the house is still there. They can certainly use it. But when you do take a look at it, this isn't something that somebody said, hey, gee, I'd like to punch a hole in my wall and put out a deck. It's already set up for that. So they're, while not absolutely detrimental, when somebody were to take a look, if you were to sell it on the market and somebody were coming to try to buy it, the first thing they'd probably do is look out those door windows or walk around the back and say, where's the deck? Well, it's functionally obsolescent. It's functionally obsolete, certainly. Yes. So, thank you. Uh, I would agree. Yes, sir. I can kind of address that on another aspect. If they were to sell it or anything, sure. they wouldn't even be able to get insurance on it because no insurance carrier would cover that with doors opening up to the ground while someone can fall. Thank you. 
Okay, so we've been through these. I'd like to take each one of them separately, but I think we'll go fairly quickly through these. Uh, so the needed variance is due to the unique circumstance of the property, not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. Anybody have any discussions on that? To me, it's pretty obvious. It's just time. And uh, so I have no, no problem with that. Number one, all in favor? Unanimous. Number two, the granting of the variance will not, result, uh, not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use of the fair market value of abutting properties. I would comment that it produces a desirable change to the property. I would agree with you. Probably the neighbors would like to see the buckets gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, desirable. Good point. Uh, so all in favor of number two being met? That's unanimous. Practical difficulty is not a result of an action taken by the applicant or prior owner. Uh, technically, I guess you could argue that not taking care of it 25 years ago would, in, would, would, create, would have created this situation, but I think there's common sense that has to apply there. So it's not as if nobody does that if they can't afford to do it and repair it and keep care of it. So obviously they just either couldn't physically or financially do anything. I'm not going to hold that against them for 25 years ago. So that's my position on the, on that one. I don't know if anybody else has any opinion on it. Yeah, that was, I had similar questions on that because technically it was an action taken by the prior owner. Uh, it was a, a non-action action. Oh, yeah. Well, they took it down, too. Yeah, um, did you want to add anything to that? No, I'm fine with that. Okay. Any discussions on that? Uh, so, number three, all in favor? That's unanimous. Uh, number four, no other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except the variance. I think it's been demonstrated that there is no reasonable, feasible, <laughs> reasonable, feasible alternative. As he pointed out, you can't you can't move the doors and the areas of the house that you would shift the deck down to would um, wouldn't work. And normally, I would say no on this, but <coughs> I mean, knowing what I know about the house and those doors, I mean, they need to put something there. It does need to happen. I agree. Uh, in favor. And it's unanimous. Um, the granting of the variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with surrounding properties. I think you said something about that. Uh, discussion on that? I think it, I think it does. It makes it, it's consistent with any home in Scarborough that I know of. Most have decks or some kind of a, of a backyard. Uh, they'll probably have to get. I just don't. I, I, this is only going to help the property. It'll also protect any wood rot that may have already been there, whatever. It'll, it'll help that issue, so I have no problem. All yeah. there. Getting the bucket on the way. <coughs> <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> uh, the granting variance will have an, uh, have, will not have an, an sorry, unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. I don't see anything here. That would, it doesn't seem like there's any issue that would be tied to that. Um, all in favor? Unanimous. Property is not located. We know that it's not in a flood zone. It wouldn't be here. And again, the case for strict application of the dimensional property. I think there would be substantial hardship if you were to sell this. Um, it would. If you're competing against other houses, that house would lose. And so I think that's enough of a reason, in my opinion. I, and I think you're coming. Well, it's actually, they wouldn't be able to get insurance on it if anybody inspected it. All in favor? That's unanimous. So I uh, have a motion for the uh, approval for appeal number. Uh, move to appeal. Move to appeal. Move to approve appeal number 2599. Second. Any discussion on the motion. No, no, no. David. That's unanimous. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. until we can get anything up on the screen. Sure.
This may be a one knock knocking. You know? <laughs> Someone's already wrote it yet. professional land surveyor with Netto Land Surveying. Could you say your last name first, please? Carpenter. Okay. Mark Carpenter. Okay. Uh, with Netto Land Surveying and representing uh, Robin and Jeff Marksanskis. Uh, Jeff is here tonight. Uh, they're the applicants. Okay. Um, they came, uh, we were, came involved with this project uh, during a sort of a routine mortgage loan inspection uh, for a refinance on the property. Uh, during the inspection, it disclosed uh, apparent encroachment <coughs> of the abutter's garage. Um, this was <coughs> obviously the uh, properties, both properties are of an age that this predates uh, the zoning and uh, no building, uh, building permits uh, were found in, in the file. Uh, we're here before you for uh, practical difficulty in regards to the space and bulk requirement of the uh, minimum lot size. Uh, currently, both properties are do not meet our legal non-conforming in regards to lot size. They're both under the, the minimum requirement. Um, the applicant and the neighbor are uh, both involved as, as far as trying to relocate the, the common boundary here to free up the encroachment. Um, and relocating the boundary here would would meet the side side yard setback of the zone. Uh, we're not reducing the frontage of the of the applicant's front yard uh, less than the, the minimum, and this would actually bring the the abutter's front yard into more conform, in conformance. Um, and by adjusting the side lot line, we're going to free both the garage and the driveway. Um, brought a photo here that wasn't included in the package, but helps to sort of demonstrate We've got not only the, the aerial view, which you guys have, um, but the front yard is sort of a street view. It helps sort of show. Here's the garage, uh, the property line, or you shift the property line over. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, I'd like to say it's uncommon, but it's not really that uncommon. There are a lot of cases where once um, the mortgage loan inspections are done, structures on the property appear to be in places that people didn't expect them to be, and property lines are different. And, and uh, so this was an attempt. Um, uh, Mark and uh, his firm came to me and wanted to know if the town would approve such a boundary line change in order to clear up any title clouds on the title for, for conveyance of, of the, uh, uh, the Marsanskis uh, property. And uh, so in consulting with the town's attorney, um, the point was raised that our ordinance doesn't expressly prohibit the creation of a non-conforming lot. It simply um, prohibits us from issuing a building permit on a non-conforming lot if somebody, somebody was today to create a non-conforming lot by conveyance. Um, so where these lots were both non-conforming to begin with, um, the abutters lot more non-conforming than the Marsanskis lot, um, I didn't feel like the town really, you know, from my perspective, I didn't see that it was really um, doing any harm to improve again to kind of correct that trespass issue and clear the title but the odd thing is that you in doing so 
you forfeit your grandfathered non-conforming, existing non-conforming lot status. In other words, any non-conforming lot of record can be built upon as long as they meet the setback requirements and so on and so forth. They, they forfeit that lot of record status um, by changing that lot line. So in effect, what the applicant is coming to the board for is, is to grant that relief uh, to them to sort of increase the nonconformity of their lot, but then it, it preserves their ability to get a building permit for, for their house if they wanted to do an addition or a, a deck or something on. As long as that met setbacks, they could do that. So it kind of reestablishes the legality of their lot. Let me just, if I can. Sure. So these are the, these are the people who read uh, uh, it's the property owner at least at this point. This is the applicant. This is the applicant. Yes. Okay. So the property is when they're sharing it. Is this being pushed okay. over this way or? So so if you look at the if you look at your everybody got their plan the the the, the survey plan in front of them. I've got it up on the big screen. I, I don't know if you, I'm not going to try to get my pen out. So, so the property on the left is the Marsanskis property. The property on the right is the abutter. Currently, the Marsanskis boundary line goes through the abutter's garage. Okay, so everybody see that? So what Mark's uh, uh, firm is proposing is to uh, create a new boundary line that is that places the abutters garage totally on their property and also meets the 15 foot side setback. In doing so, they're reducing the area of the Marsanskis property. That's the only non-conformance that they're actually increasing. The, um, it already meets street frontage requirements um, and I think the, the uh, building is, is conforming with, within its location. So, so they're reducing already non-conforming area by a little bit, still maintaining um, the minimum uh, road frontage and a little bit more. And they're increasing the conformity of the other lot, which is also non-conforming, <coughs> by adding a little bit more to their frontage and taking care of the trespass and meeting the side setback. Now, do, do, does this property here, the one on the right, do they lose any rights by this event happening? Would you mention that? No, that? because they're already non-conforming and it's actually increasing increasing their conformance it's it's decreasing their conformance and that's why that would that would so that's why we don't need them here yeah no okay so we th they are uninjured by this they're helped by this tremendously <laughs> <laughs> I mean any way you any way you slice it they're helped by this yeah yeah uh, okay and then this one over here yeah. is uh, this will lose its ability to come back to the board for with, without approval of a practice, they, so, so here's the deal. They could create this new boundary line mm -hmm. and the conveyance could happen without any board action, but they would lose their grandfathered status. Because they're coming because here. Because that's case. right. Thank you. I'm a little dense. I, I that makes sense. Does everybody understand that? Okay. Did everybody understand it before I did? <laughs> so, okay, I get it. Makes sense. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's a... We haven't had one of these, and I don't know if we've had one of these since I've been here, but um, so it's a little different. Okay, so why don't we run Bless through you. the requirements of uh, <coughs> So the need of the variance is due to the unique circumstance of the property and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. If you just state on record what sure. your situation is. Uh, yes, the variance is due to the unique encroachment, which has persisted for many years and is not uh, the general condition in the neighborhood. And the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or the fair market value of abutting properties. No, granting the variance will bring the common boundary closer to the current line of occupation and will eliminate the encumbrance affecting both the use and fair market value of both properties. And the practical, practical difficulty is not a result of an action taken by the applicant or prior owner? No, the practical difficulty is a result of the parcels uh, lot area which was created prior to the current uh, zoning district's minimum lot area requirement. And the, uh, no other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except a variance. Uh, no, the applicant and the, the abutter are in agreement to relocate the boundary. Yeah, or in agreement to relocate the boundary line. 
and the granting of the variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with surrounding properties. Uh, yes, right granting the variance will bring the common boundary closer to the occupation. And uh, the granting of the variance will not have an adverse, uh, unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment? Uh, no, granting the variance will not change the, envir the natural environment and will prevent disturbance created by relocating the improvements. And not in the shoreland zone? No. And then the last one is the, is the value of the properties, and I think it's obvious that it could increase. So it, it's interesting that it doesn't hurt the value of this property, it hurts the value of the other property. I mean, it helps you with that property. Well, it helps both both properties because a conveyance would be made very difficult as far as title on the on the uh, property yeah. with that trespass issue still there. Okay. So that's that's kind of the feasible or excuse me, that's kind of the practical difficulty. Okay. Uh, as far as the financial piece of it. Uh, let me open up to the public. Anybody wish to speak on this? Um, Do any letters? Mr. Longstaff got an email from David Reed, and he says, I am the abutter to appeal number 2600. That is to be heard on March 8, 2017. I will be out of town on this date. Do I need to be present if I am in favor of the appeal? Do you want me to read Mr. Longstaff's response? I mean... He, he didn't send any additional he did, he information. He never sent any additional comments, but he, he, he stated he was in favor right. of it. He only wanted to know if he had to be here in order to state that. And right. I told him he could send his comments in writing. We didn't receive any, but that's the I would say that letter affirms his position. Anybody, anybody question that? No. Okay. So essentially, they're really giving away land. Just well, we don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> We don't know that. <laughs> Fixing the problem, you know. Yeah. Okay. So how did, how did how did this problem happen? Uh, I didn't get into it, but the properties, both properties, were like the first one was sold in '56, and the second one is uh, soon after uh, came out of a common common owner. They were actually purchased by a, by a family, common family. Um, it was owned. By the brothers, and uh, it was owned by that family all the way up until uh, March. Uh, this, uh, the property kind of This certain like this on a common boundary line between the family. Uh, so the house on the right was built prior to any zoning in the town of Scarborough. Correct. I couldn't find I couldn't find any building permit information for either property. In uh, 1957, tax card uh, had both properties and garages. We're, we're guessing both pro both dwellings were built before the zoning. Which was in '78. No, zoning was in place in '59. Mm -hmm. okay. So, Mr. Longstaff, I just have a quick question. Maybe I'm just like not understanding. If we were to approve this, would that prohibit them from coming back before us if they needed to get anything done because they're giving up that grandfathered or? No. Uh, okay. If you were to approve it, it would allow them to get a okay. building permit for anything that they could meet setbacks for. Okay. So just re it, the it, it just Yeah, it just gives okay. them a conforming, a legally, a legally existing non-conforming lot again, which is what they have now. They don't have to come here in order to do they it. Don't ha they don't have to come here because the ordinance does not prohibit them from creating a non-conforming lot. Right okay. now, they're an existing legally non-conforming lot. By changing that line, they forfeit that status. They're, trying, they're here to reestablish that status, get the blessing, if you will, of the board in order to change that line and not mess up their ability to get a permit for something else down the road. Has this legally been done already? No, it's waiting for it. Okay. All right, uh, reading the uh, requirements here. So, I don't hear a What are you doing? Do with your pages. There it is, right here. <laughs> 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 All 
All right, so I'm just going to read one through um, seven, and we'll continue from there. The need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. I would say it's certainly unique. Um, I have no problem with that. Anybody all in favor of one being met? Two, the variance, the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use of the fair market value of the budding properties. In fact, it just does the opposite, yeah, and you're not going to notice it uh, one way or the other. So in favor of two being met. Three, the practical difficulty is not the result of an action taken by the applicant or prior owner. Yep. Question on this. <laughs> Where it was owned by family and two brothers, do we consider that to be an application of the prior owner? Where the technically the garage is not the owner that's requesting it now? or? I think our argument or our position is that this was probably built before 1957. Yeah, I think you could reasonably say that, that, that although obviously somebody took action and built both structures and then later created a, a boundary line, I'm assuming unknowingly they thought it was, you know, it was putting each house on its own lot. I, I don't think they intentionally created this problem. Okay. That's, that's how I would look at that. Uh -huh. It wasn't an intentional action to create this problem. It was an accident. Accidents happen, unfortunately, more often than we'd like. And so that's, I think that's the situation. So I think that one you could say, yeah, obviously there was action taken, but it wasn't an intentional action like, you know, they intentionally conveyed a boundary line going through their car garage. I don't think anybody would knowingly do that. Thank you. Great. Uh, Hopefully they had better surveyors <laughs> <laughs> now than they did then. <laughs> Any discussion on this? Seeing none, all in favor? thank you. And the granting variance uh, will bring the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with the surrounding properties. Uh, the ac applicant's property know the, the you, you skip the, the feasible thing. alternative. Oh, nor the feasible alternatives available to the applicant except the variance. That would be an obvious. I can I can add to that if, if the chair pleases. Um, according to the town's attorney, the only other um, way to resolve this issue would have been <coughs> possibly a non-action letter, which we we've, we've talked about and heard before. Mm -hmm. Some title companies will accept it. Some title companies won't. Um, much more acceptable, almost universally acceptable, would be a variance, and that's why they've chosen this path. Um, so from a feasible alternative, they've chosen the, the, the more feasible alternative. Uh, it's not the only alternative, but I think it's the more feasible alternative in order to correct, once and for all, correct this problem. And you own the property currently? Uh, you ought to check with your title company because they probably have liability on that. If you want to take the stand, it's just a comment, just a side comment. When you get title insurance, title insurance protects you against exactly things like this. So you may just want to check on your policy. Yeah, the, uh, Sir, can we just have you, you take the mic? To, if you want to take the mic, you can. I was just a, a snippet of a statement. Just to yeah, and it was so long ago, too, that you know, we hit title insurance. Okay. Okay, and um, let's see, where were we? Uh, the, the granting of variance will bring the, right here? Oh. oh, all in favor of four. No other feasible alternatives available. That's unanimous, thank you. The uh, grant <coughs> of the variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with surrounding properties. And I think we can all agree with that. A bit more in conformance. Is that unanimous? The granting of the variance will not have unreasonably adverse effects on the natural environment. It's not going to be any adverse effect. All in favor? Unanimous, thank you. Uh, it's not in the flood zone, otherwise it wouldn't be here. And uh, it could do harm. So let's be in favor of number seven and eight. It's unanimous. So do I have a motion for approval of a, which one is this one? Uh, move to approve appeal number 2600. Second. Discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Less lawn you have to mow.
Anything else for you tonight? I never even thought about it. I guess I have nothing. <laughs> I didn't have a chance to think about any comments for tonight. Do you have anything, Karen? No, no. The only thing I have is, again, I would request that people call the sanitary district, that anybody that wanted a in-law apartment or a uh, accessory unit, sorry, and didn't get one, even though they were approved, or wants one in the future, should call the set the uh, sanitary district and challenge them on the fact that they had double charging on that, charging $3,000 for that fee. I wrote that ordinance. It was not the intent. The intent was to make life easier for people, and if there's no accountability, so please call and complain because it's $3,000 to add a room so that your family can stay in the house or you can keep your home. And the reason why they come here and pay the fee to get the approval, now they're going to have to do that, is because they, they needed that freedom to be able to do that. I have heard that most of the appeals we've gone through over the years, since that ordinance was put in place in 2000, about 17 years, have not been done because of the $3,000 fee that they charge. And then they, on top of that, charge another $50 fee per month, considering it a two unit. It's not a two unit. So that's my uh, my gripe. It'll be a continuous gripe uh, until we change the rules. Uh, any other discussion or motion to adjourn? Mr. John. Second. No favor. Janice, thank you very much. Have a great evening. Make a phone call.